today let us uh, look at a few classes the main uh, the strong perfect graph theorem if you remember stated that a graph is perfect if and only if there is no hole or anti hole in it so write it here no hole or no hole or anti hole what is hole so in your graph suppose you identify a cycle so no sorry hole means i should say um odd hole and odd anti hole odd hole or anti hole so suppose you identify a say five cycle five Seven, nine, three does not matter. Three we don't consider as a hole. Uh, four, uh, six, etc. are uh, okay because they are even. O odd hole means if you take if you get a cycle which is of odd length greater than or equal to five, and then uh, so there can be many things here, no. So the gra it is in a graph, but then. if you concentrate on these vertices alone and see what is the induced subgraph on that set of vertices that should be just that cycle there should not be any other things like this this is a chord right and no chord should be there so nothing like this induced subgraph on that should be just such a cycle so if you simply say a cycle uh that only means that we have uh, those edges which is forming the cycle other edges also may be there on that right when you insist that the induced subgraph on the set of vertices forming that cycle should be just that cycle that means there is no more edges in that no other edges right that is what is uh called a hall when we say odd hall we mean that the length the number of vertices on that hall is uh, odd Great, uh, with five or seven or nine, not three is not considered. Uh, so anti hall is just the complement of that hall. So, for instance, if I take this hall, what would be a anti hall corresponding to that? This should be the anti hall because it is a five cycle. Then the anti hall is also the five cycle here. so but uh, if you have taken a bigger graph like this suppose this is seven vertices right so now you can uh, create uh, so it will be like this all the edges which are not red right this graph So it's quite easy to construct an anti hole because you just take the, a set of vertices, just uh, remove a cycle from that. The remaining, whatever is remaining, is the anti hole. Uh, yes. This also. So now that uh, we know that it's proved in the 2000, I told as 2002 or three. Paul Seymour and his team proved uh, that this statement is correct. A perfect graph uh, is exactly those graphs which does not contain odd hole or an odd anti hole. So now look at uh, graphs which are kind of uh, so work giving some natural restriction on the length of uh, induced cycles in it. So the first such example is uh, caudal graph. so a graph is caudal if and only if it does not contain any induced cycle of length 4 what does it mean 
you take any cycle in a quadrilateral graph if it is of length uh, four or more then what can you expect in that it's just not induced that means that means there are some chords for instance if uh, you locate in the in, in the quadrilateral graph suppose you see this cycle then there should be some chord in it somewhere right then you see a smaller cycle here right like this there will be some other chord so now you see a smaller cycle here but then that's a triangle that's okay he, if you go to this cycle then what will happen uh, here you see a four cycle then you need a chord maybe this one right so now both are triangles now it's okay uh, yeah all cycles have to be uh, either they should have a chord or they should be a uh, triangle this is this kind of graphs are called chordal graphs uh, this was uh, this chordal graphs were studied much before uh, because of uh, its applications i guess some electrical networks people i think it was called rigid circuit graphs at some point of time i don't know what <coughs> it is and uh, there were several uh, applications in which chordal graphs appeared right so um, and uh, say there are many natural situations chordal graphs will appear also mm, for instance if you uh, yeah you can think of many such uh, situations for instance a visibility graph or uh, something like that right it's naturally some four cycles can be avoided and uh, let's see some properties of uh, chordal graphs so th one one property about chordal graphs which uh, is interesting is the about its minimal separators uh, i hope all of you know what is a separator of the graph right so the separator means so it's some set suppose this is a graph so something like this so if you remove this set the you get two parts right separator minimum separator the cardinality of the minimum separator is what it's the vertex connectivity right the minimum number of vertices to be removed so but minimum separator means uh, so you you find out some set of vertices and then if you remove it uh, then the graph should separate and that should be minimum cardinality there is also something called a minimal separators what is what can be the difference between minimum and minimal anybody else any uh, can anyone suggest a reason to use minimal instead of minimum okay have you seen this word being minimal used instead of minimum sometimes so the we refer to here at least what we mean is if you take any subset of it there is no more, no separator in it so if you take a separator and i will tell that it's a minimal separator if no proper subset of that set of that vertex vertex set will form a separator that means if you want to remove disconnect the graph you have to remove all of these things you cannot remove a part of it and get it separated there will be still connections with two parts when i say minimal sorry minimum minimum means it is by number right it should be the smallest right minimal need not be minimum sometimes it's just that uh, no proper subset of it cannot can, cannot be a separator but uh, there can be somewhere else some separator which is smaller than this right um, yeah it's quite possible that i i get some other piece here yeah something like this see see if i i have to remove this entire set to disconnect the graph here but then the minimum is somewhere here right so the because this has nothing to do with that right so now uh, so what is uh, an interesting property of a minimal separator and uh, so a property of the minimal separator is like this suppose this is a separator so suppose these are vertices of the minimal separator now can you see that each vertex of a minimal separator 
should have at least one edge going to both, at least one edge, both sides. Can anyone see a, a, tell me a reason why it should be like this? So for instance, if I take a vertex, it's not possible that I have this cell on, or maybe a lot of it. Yeah, there can be a lot of just to this side, uh, but uh, suppose no edge to this side. Why this is not possible? Yeah, because in that case, this part alone is enough to, yeah, this part alone, see this portion alone is enough to disconnect it because this vertex is not really connecting to that side, right? So therefore, that is not a minimal <coughs> separate, a sub subset of this uh, set is able to disconnect the graph, right? So therefore, to both sides, it should have edges. Every vertex, each vertex of it should have edges. Let us look at a caudal graph and uh, think about the minimal separator of a caudal graph. What is interesting about the minimal separator of a caudal graph? So the statement is that the, the minimal separator of a caudal graph has to be a complete graph, induced subgraph. If you take a minimal separator, and look at the induced subgraph on it, it should be a clique, it should be a complete subgraph. Why is it so? Can anybody see the reason for that? Suppose, uh, let me just see this. Suppose this is a caudal graph and I just draw a minimal separator. Suppose this is a minimal separator of the caudal graph. So the claim is that there should be all edges here. Why? What is wrong if at least one edge is missing? Suppose there is two vertices here where this edge is missing. What is wrong? Any idea? The uh, I can uh, tell you, I can remind you what property we knew about the minimal separator of the caudal graph. Uh, sorry, minimal separator of any graph. So this vertex should have one edge here, one edge here. More edges can be there one edge here from here, one edge here, more can be there but at least one, right. Uh, does this picture tell you why this uh, uh, dot uh, between these two vertices <coughs> and edge should be there? It is not possible to uh, for that edge to be absent, that is what you are saying. What happens? Yes, we should, we sh if it, we can try to form a cycle. For instance, wherever this is reaching and wherever this is reaching, we can get the shortest path here. Similarly, here also we can get a shortest path. In fact, from starting from here, among <coughs> all the neighbors, so if there are more neighbors here, uh, we can uh, take from this set to this set the shortest path, right? And then what happens is some something like this will come, right? Maybe I am yeah finally something like this will come I'm, I don't know which exactly will be the neighbor which starts coming to here and uh, what is good about it let me uh, something like this will be seen so what is good about this this thing what is contradicting here yeah there should be a chord because it's a four cycle now you're seeing there should be a chord where where is the worst there are many possibilities for a chord right but where can the chord be See, one possibility for the chord is that it can be somewhere here, maybe. But that is not possible because we are <coughs> taking the shortest path there, right? In this portion, no chord. This portion, there is no chord. This portion, there is no chord. And this <coughs> vertex also cannot uh, send anything to here because we are taking, uh, among the neighbors, we are taking the shortest connection, right? So the chord can be either across, that means from here to here, but that is not possible because uh, any edge going from here can only go to the separator because it cannot jump over the separator right so the chord can only be here right so that means uh, this edge cannot be missing that is why this entire uh, separator should like there won't be any absent edge inside that so this should be a clique this is one interesting property of caudal graph now we have used the defining property of caudal graphs to reach this conclusion, right? That means uh, any 
cycle of length 4 or more should have a chord. That was the defining property of uh, chordal graph. No? And so, therefore, you cannot expect uh, the same property on other graphs. Right? It is a very special thing about the chordal graphs. So, this is uh, a useful property. So, minimal separators are cliques. Why is it useful? So, let us say. So, uh, from this thing, using this thing, we can uh, get a very interesting, very useful uh, property of caudal graphs. Namely, any caudal graphs contains a simply shell vertex. What is a simply shell vertex? A simply shell vertex means if you look at uh, that vertex and its neighborhood that should induce that neighborhood along with that vertex should induce a complete graph something like this for instance if I take this vertex. it should have all the edges here right it should be a clique. I am not saying that all vertices will be like this if all vertices are like this one then what will happen if all vertices of the graph are simply shared then what can you tell about the graph uh, it should be a clique because that is not possible for uh, uh, other graphs right. So, we are only claiming that there is one simply shell vertex then you will uh, one simply shell vertex there will be one vertex such that it is uh, that vertex and its neighborhood would induce a clique that is good, but you will wonder what is good about it right. So, it is some curious property that is it, but what is good about it is if you find a simply shell vertex then you can think of removing that simply shell vertex right. Then what is left is again a caudal graph, why is it again a caudal graph? Because what is left is an induced subgraph because you, if you remove one vertex then it is uh, again a new subgraph. And uh, if the original graph satisfies the condition for the caudal graph that means there is no cordless cycle of length 4 or more then the induced subgraph also cannot have right because if the induced subgraph had a cordless cycle of length 4 or more that was there in the original also no. Uh, so, uh, presence of one new vertex cannot destroy this cordless cycle right. So, therefore, uh, induced subgraph are also caudal if a graph is caudal every induced subgraph is of it is also caudal right. So, what is good about it I remove one simply shell vertex the remaining graph is again a caudal graph there should be another simply shell vertex in it because that is what we proved no and you can remove that vertex there will be another simply shell vertex in it. Is it true that uh, those simply shell vertices are already there before you remove the vertex, vertex the earlier vertices no those might have appeared because you removed the earlier vertices probably it is possible that uh, uh, you have this simply shell vertex now, but then the earlier vertex you removed was something like this right and uh, yeah. Yeah, earlier vertices you removed or something like this. This probably together its entire neighborhood was probably not simply shell, this edge was missing. But then when you remove these two, then this became simply shell. That is all. So, that is very nice. In fact, uh, one after the other, as you remove vertices, a sequence of simply shell vertices will come. That means the vertex set of the caudal graph can be arranged in an order, like first a simply shell vertex then a simply shell vertex in the remaining graph, then a simply shell vertex in the remaining graph like that right. And uh, if you uh, read this ordering which this is an elimination ordering, this is called a perfect elimination ordering. It is called a uh, usually we write it as PEO, PEO perfect elimination ordering. I will tell you why this uh, word this word comes to you will wonder why this elimination ordering, but before that let us get to the simply shell vertex. So, I only motivated why a simply shell the search for a simply shell vertex is interesting 
right? So now, uh, how do I show that there is a simple shell vertex? My claim is that uh, <coughs> that property of uh, all minimal separator being inducing cliques that will help us to uh, show that there is a simple shell vertex, right? So how do we uh, do this thing? Um, we can do an induction because at least we have guessed the thing. If you ask me how do I guess, okay, anyway, somebody by observation or something you guess. No, no, any simply shell vertex you remove. No, any simply shell vertex can be removed. It does not matter because which you first pick up a simply shell vertex which is guaranteed to exist and uh, remove that vertex that is eliminated first and then. Uh, in the remaining graph, there is a simply shell vertex with respect to the remaining graph. Other, other vertex, simply shell vertex. Not necessarily, no. For instance, uh, no, it can be something like this. So, suppose this is a clique, and then I have many vertices like this. So, you see, these are all simply shell vertices here. See? So, I can remove any of them. Right, but then this is not connecting to everything. See, this is right. So this first, this first, this first. In any order, you can remove. It does not matter. They are all simply shell vertices. But then once you remove all of them, and then any of these things can be removed, right? But on the other hand, before this is removed, this vertex is removed. This particular vertex, see, is not a simply shell vertex because this is connected to this also. It's connected to this also. This edge is missing, right? So you have to. Certain ordering is there, but uh, you know, at some point of time, there will be many candidates. There can be many candidates, right? Any candidate is fine. You can you can pick up your favorite. That's why you can uh, uh, one question maybe to count how many perfect elimination orderings are possible, right? There are such questions also, enumeration questions. So I hope you understood what is this perfect elimination ordering and what is a simply shell vertex. Now, my interest is to prove that there exists a simply shell vertex in a uh, caudal graph and the only tool I am going to use to prove is the lemma we proved uh, just before namely all minimal separators of caudal graphs are inducing cliques they induce cliques and uh, remember to prove that lemma we only use the defining property of caudal graph namely any cycle of length four or more should have a chord now how do we use uh, do this thing we can use induction because uh, now that I have told you the theorem, right? Then we can try to use induction. Otherwise, without knowing the theorem, you cannot use induction. But some, if somebody tells you the theorem, and uh, then you can uh, try to use induction. That's a proof technique, right? So just uh, uh, if you can guess a theorem by working out with examples, or sometimes uh, you get an intuition that this thing may be correct, then uh, one natural things to thing to try uh, is induction, right? But now you see, induction. you have done many inductions in your mathematics students might have done uh, many proofs using induction. Uh, but induction, uh, sometimes it works very easily, sometimes it is somewhat tricky, right? For instance, uh, it may not work. So this is some such situation. For instance, so you can start with uh, smaller graphs, it's correct. So now, uh, now, see, suppose you proved for all graphs with all caudal graphs with n minus 1 vertices or less uh, that there exists a simply shell vertex in it. Now you get an n vertex caudal graph. Suppose this is an n vertex caudal graph. <coughs> now you want to show that there is a simply shell vertex in it. How will you go about it? How does the induction hypothesis help? You want to show that there exists some vertex somewhere here in this thing so that all, uh, if you look at the neighborhood of it along with it should form a clique. So what may be the, so it is that uh, we know that there are some, once you remove uh, any vertex, you know that some simply shell vertex is existing, right? So some simply shell vertex will come because n minus 1, but does it mean that in this graph, bigger graph, there is a simply shell vertex. Maybe because you removed one vertex, the simply shell vertex came. Hmm? 
because you try removing this vertex suppose and uh, maybe this is an uh, this is simply shell vertex which is occurring now but then it's possible that there was an edge here right and then uh, this was <coughs> this simply shell vertex is not a simply shell vertex of the bigger graph you understand what i'm telling see this edge this edge may be there i'm trying to remove this vertex make it an n minus 1 vertex graph and uh, the question is can i make use of the simplicial vertex of the n minus 1 graph the graph on n minus 1 vertices as the simplicial vertex of the bigger graph not necessarily right because this is this may be the simplicial vertex here but then unfortunately the vertex you removed may have an edge to that yeah there can be some situations where it's not so easy right yeah i guess maybe if you try uh, really hard probably you may be able to you can you should try to prove it like this but uh, so there there is something slightly stronger we can prove there is uh, one simplicial vertex we will prove that there is there are two simplicial vertices that two two non adjacent simplicial vertices not just one two of them and two of them such that they are not adjacent to each other but you will tell me that uh, complete graphs are caudal graphs right complete graphs does not have uh, even non adjacent vertices they are all simplicial vertices but uh, they are non adjacent at all so then how can you have two non adjacent vertices so we should uh, avoid that case uh, unless it's a complete graph huh? unless it's a complete graph I think this is what we should set up.